So this should be the should be the last solutions video for remote learning 2020. I know everybody is so sad to leave remote learning and, and get the summer started. I know everybody wants to keep doing this like forever and ever, right? Right. So anyway, um, here are the two worksheets, the mass energy uh, equivalence worksheet and the standard model worksheet. Um, I think this guy, the mass energy guy, might even only be two pages. There's one, and then here's two. Um, there's not a lot to say about e equals mc squared. And then here's the standard model. There's more to say about that. Here's the first page of the worksheet. Second page of the worksheet. Third page of the worksheet. Page four. Well, that always happens. Page four. There we go. Page five. And is this the last page? Yes. And then here's our handy dandy reference table. Page one, page two, page three. We're gonna need that bottom right there, page three. Page four, I don't think we'll need. Page five, maybe some modern physics equations like e equals mc squared. And then page six, from the beginning of the year. All right, let's get started. Number one, from the mass energy equivalence worksheet. Okay, so the first question says 1.53 times 10 to the negative 3 universal mass units. What is that in mega electron volts? This seems like what the heck are they talking about? But you got to remember that the universal mass unit mega electron volt conversion is on the front page of the reference tables. Here it is. One universal mass unit is 931 mega electron volts. So we just need to say how many mega electron volts is to 1.53 to 10 to the negative 3 universal mass units if 931 mega electron volts is one universal mass unit. Here's our classic conversion setup. We have um, x, we we'll call that x, the question mark, over what we have, what we're looking to convert, equals the conversion on the right side with the same units, mega electron, mega electron volts, MeV, mega electron volts, universal mass units, universal mass units. And so we cross multiply, we solve for x. So when you convert it out, 1.53 times 10 to the negative three universal mass units is 1.42 mega electron volts, that is choice two. Number two is another mass energy equivalence question, but this one's going from kilograms to joules, that's e equals mc squared. So e equals mc squared, don't forget that c is the speed of light in a vacuum, that's on the first front page of the reference table if you forget that number. And don't forget to square it. That equals mc squared. Uh, you get 4.5 times 10 to the 14 joules, and that's choice three. Let's go to uh, number four. Four is just like two. And you'd be like, what do you mean it's just like two? They don't give you a mass. They do. They tell you it's the rest mass of an electron. Now, you're not, you don't have to memorize that, but you do have to memorize where you can find it. Front page of the reference table, rest mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Yeah, they say rest mass because when particles move very, very quickly at large fractions of the speed of light, there are relativistic changes in their mass. Um, so that's why they say rest mass. But anyway, there's the mass e equals mc squared. Don't forget to square c and you get 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules Choice two, number five. Now five is another e equals mc squared, kind of like number two, but take a look at the answer choices. They actually use prefixes in front of the joules. So let's see how that works. E equals mc squared, we get 1.8 times 10 to the 12 joules. Now I see 1.8 is listed twice. It's uh, choice one and choice three. Is it 1.8 terajoules or 1.8 megajoules? The front page of the reference table can help you with that. Here we are down at the bottom of the front page of the reference tables, and I look up big capital T for Terra and capital M for Mega. And Terra is 10 to the 12, and Mega is 10 to the 6. We said 1.8 times 10 to the 12 joules, so it's choice 1. Incidentally, 10 to the 12 is 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 6, so Terra is really Mega Mega. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, if ever you see prefixes and you don't know what they mean, they are on the front page of the reference table at the bottom. And it's also no coincidence that mega is million and tera is trillion. So yeah, there could be 1.8 Trader Joe's or 1.8 TJ Sheehan's um, or maybe just 1.8 Tera Joules. All right, let's move on. Six is another E equals MC squared problem, but this one's even tougher because not only do we have to look up the mass of the electron again, which we did before, but now we're to pulling in antiparticles and there are two of them and what's going on. So let's take a look. All right, so first of all, we have an electron. We know that the mass is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. We looked that up earlier um, from the front page of the reference table. Then it talks about an anti-electron, which they call a positron. They got to remember that antimatter particles, they have opposite sign of charge, but they have the same mass as their corresponding particles. So the mass of an anti-electron is the same as the mass of the electron, which we know. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Now the problem says that they annihilate each other and it wants to know the energy that is released. So it's not just one particle, if they annihilate each other, that's both particles turn into energy. So I have to do E equals MC squared, but for M, I'm not just using the electron, I'm also including the anti-electron. So the mass is twice the mass of the electron, because it's the electron and the anti-electron. Um, that's 1.82 times 10 to the negative 30 kilograms. Now I do E equals MC squared. After all that, don't forget to square C. You get 1.64 times 10 to the negative 13 joules, choice one. Number eight. Um, so we have a graph of energy versus mass. I know that energy and mass are directly proportional. E equals mc squared, energy and mass are directly proportional, and we know that any two variables that are directly proportional to each other, their graph is gonna look like this. And that's choice one. Incidentally, the slope of that line, the physical significance of the slope of that line is c squared. And you can determine that two different ways. You can fit the equation to the slope of a line, y equals slope times x, y axis is energy, x axis is mass, at least slope is c squared, or slope is uh, rise over run, change in y over change in x, that would be energy over mass, and when you solve for energy over mass, you get e, I get c squared by e equals mc squared. So the slope, either way you look at it, the slope of that line is c squared. That might be a question that pops up later. I'm at the bottom of this page, let's go to number 12. Number 12 you have to read carefully. It says the uranium nucleus emits an alpha particle. The mass of the, nu of the new nucleus and the alpha particle are less than the mass of the original nucleus. Explains what happens to the missing mass. When I say read it carefully, you can't be like, ah, uh, yeah, the uranium nucleus is lighter because it lost an alpha particle. It's not what it's saying. It's saying that the mass of the new nucleus and the alpha particle, those together, is still less than the original uranium nucleus, and it wants to know why, what happened. So yeah, we're dealing with uranium, and then that uranium spits out an alpha particle, and the alpha particle takes off. Um, but then, even though, the you would think that, oh, the uranium afterwards, like, yeah, it's missing the alpha particle, but if you put the, the new um, nucleus and the alpha particle together, it's gonna be the same mass, but it's not. And the reason why is because in that process, some of the mass is turned into energy. By e equals mc squared, some of the m turns into e. And so if there's a mass loss, that mass loss, it's okay to lose mass if it turns into energy. That's why it's, it's really conservation of energy and mass. Um, mass and energy can go from one to the other, but the, the sum um, remains the same. Um, but yeah, so if there's some mass lost, it goes into energy. In fact, that's why I drew this explosion situation right there. That is energy. And in emitting that alpha particle, even the actual energy of the alpha particle itself, um, when it's emitted, that energy had to come from somewhere. And it did. It came from, the, from a, a little bit of a mass loss in that exchange. So some of the mass... That missing mass, it turned into energy in the process. So yeah, the missing mass is turned into the energy of the alpha particle. 
some of that extra energy is also lost in the surroundings. Um, alpha particle is a helium nucleus, by the way. 16, a nudist question was coming up. Refer back to question eight. Um, let's see if we can do that here. Question eight, where I explain why um, the slope is c squared, but now they're actually asking about that for number 16. So yeah, the physical significance of the slope is c squared. That's c squared, not c. Um, also, don't pick g. The reason why they put that there is because that graph comes up weight versus mass, and the physical significance of the slope is g. Um, it comes up a bunch, but then people start thinking, oh, the physical significance of any slope is g. No way. Um, just for that equation, weight equals mg for that particular graph. For this one, it's e equals mc squared. And so c squared is the physical significance of this graph, choice two. And here we have for 18, what's the energy equivalence in joules of the mass of a proton? This is like the problem we did earlier where they asked about the mass of the electron, but now I have to look up the mass of a proton. Bottom of the front page of the reference tables, rest mass of the proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Just as a side note here about the mass of the proton and the neutron, if you looked at my um, example question walkthrough, I talk about how the mass of the proton and the neutron in terms of universal mass units are not the same. Um, but to three significant figures in terms of kilograms, they are. So if you look at the front page of the reference tables in both the proton and the neutron are 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, that's true to a precision of three significant figures. But if you get more precise than that, you'll actually find that their masses are in fact different. All right, e equals mc squared with proton, let's go. And there it is, we have 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. And that was the last question in that set. That was only, I think, two pages in this worksheet anyway, yeah. Um, so there's the modern standard model worksheet, and um, I'm pretty good on time here, but that's 24 problems, and I have less than 20 minutes left. That's not enough time. So I'm going to break here, stop this video, and make a part two video for that worksheet. Um, so stay tuned.